I think looking at how principals use their time and making sure that the majority of the time is spent on instructional leadership is really key to a successful principal. We have to make an effort to protect the principal's time so that I focus on instruction because that's the way that we're going to improve teacher practices and therefore improve student achievement. From class 203, please rise. The job of a principal is to be the instructional leader of the building. Protecting the time of the principal and making sure that within the day, the majority of the time is spent on instructional leadership is key. Good morning, PSIS 119. My personal secretary is the barrier between parents or anyone that comes into the school that has a sense of immediacy that they need to see me. She gauges the level of concern of that person and we've had discussions of what needs to come to me immediately and what needs to be ciphered through the assistant principals. Come right to the main office for your schedule, okay? All right. She protects my time by using my calendar. In the morning before my day begins, I make sure to review that calendar. I color code the schedule so that I know when I'm observing classrooms. My day is pretty mapped out so I know where I need to be at all times. What are the students expected to do in this task and what do you consider to be a proficient response? This year we finally realized that I could not sit in on all of the meetings. It was not possible. So I delegate to my teams. We have one teacher team on each grade slash content area. We also have an attendance team and we have a coaches team. I think one of the key strategies that we use in order to maintain instructional leadership within the building and protecting my time in order to do that is the delegation of duties. So we clearly have a pipeline in place so that as a staff everyone knows where to go and who to see for specific problems. Everybody wants to speak to whoever's in charge. Nobody wants to speak to the teller. They want to speak to the assistant manager of the bank, so to speak. Parents come in and think the principal does everything. And in a school that runs well, it appears that way. Sometimes it's difficult to explain that they need to set up an appointment or they need to see an assistant principal before they see me so that my time is valued and saved and their time as well. I think that in order to have a successful pipeline, it's not something that you come in on a Monday and say, oh, we're going to have a pipeline and it's going to work. An effective pipeline, I think, is based on trust. And the trust is for the principal to have faith in us to handle the situation effectively so that it doesn't constantly fall into her lap. Here at our school, you know, one of the things that we do to make sure that the pipeline works is that we have constant debriefs and discussions. In the morning, on a daily basis, we have a cabinet meeting. My cabinet consists of the two assistant principals and myself. We go over the day. We discuss who we are visiting, what classrooms we're visiting, and what teacher observations we have completed so far. What strategy am I going to use? You are taking both of the numbers and you are making a tens and one chart. I do many walkthroughs, so I'm in the classrooms at least three to four times a day, but writing up formal walkthroughs yeah. and informal observations, I do at least three to four a week personally, and I expect the same thing from the assistant principals themselves. Our focus for all of our visits is to make sure that the class uh, is standards-based and that the work reflects our instructional focus as a school. Is there anything important in that sentence that I might need? Dion. Well, apparently, it's the number 38. There is a lot that is expected of the teachers, and the teachers work in teams, they collaborate, they own the product. They were held accountable for making sure that the actions that they took as a teacher team reflected positive student growth. I think developing great teacher teams does hinge on trust, but I think it also hinges on them knowing that I, I trust and I value their professional opinion. A lot of the kids had a problem with the multi-step questions, and as I analyzed the data, most of them got it wrong. We use a system of analyzing school-wide data 
as well as classroom data to drive the instruction. By getting that granular and looking at the student work and seeing whether they have reached that standard or not drives the work of the team because if those goals have not been seen, then they need to go back to their units of study and revise them. I made sure that they were accountable and ultimately everything boils down to student achievement. I didn't know the answer because I didn't know if this was the right strategy to use as the, um, the problem. So when will you answer this question then? When you're finished? Yes. I see my job as preparing children for opportunities that have not even been created yet. My goal is to develop the child so that they will have those skills, whether it's academic or whether it's just that intrinsic drive to be the best that they can be. And that, that's an awesome job, but it's also an awesome responsibility. Have a good day, okay? All right. All right. My role here in the school is to be principal, but more so to be instructional leader. There are many things in a school, especially a school this size, that could take the principal's focus away from instruction. And so we have to be very purposeful in planning to keep me focused on instruction. We'll change that time from 9.30 to remove that grade level that you were originally going to visit. Every day, I meet with one of my assistant principals who actually serves as my school administrative manager. We really look at what types of things are on my schedule that are managerial related that we can remove and replace with instructional matters. Here our daily access begin to reflect a gradual increase of impact. So we want to continue to make that impact as well. I work very closely with him in scheduling his calendar to get him into the classrooms more often. She sets goals and she's identified teachers that might need a little more of my time, might need a little more instructional coaching. Mr. Knight is very informed of everything that is going on in the building without having to be intimately involved in every level. I make sure the building functions very smoothly through the support of the first responders. First responders are the people that help protect my time and that goes anywhere from our front office staff, head custodian, cafeteria manager, my assistant principals, as well as my counseling staff. You become our front line uh, when it comes to dealing with our parents. We're using the book, The Power of Nice, as a springboard to talk about how we can improve and have the best customer service possible. When we're answering the phone, people need to be able to hear the smile in our voice. In the meeting, we wanted to do a little bit of role play just to kind of give some ideas of some situations that might happen. Well, good morning. Thank you for calling Nesbitt Elementary School. How can I help you? I'm upset. My child has bad grades, and I haven't heard anything from the teacher, and she says she's been doing all her work. I want to speak to the principal, and I want to speak to him now. Well, do you mind if you first have, if I set up a meeting or a time for the teacher to call you? The goal is to first make these people feel appreciated and respected, and also to let them know that their concern is valued, but also to know that the principal's main priority is to be focused on instruction and to be out and about in the school working with teachers and supporting students. When my time is freed up, my focus on instruction is on being in the classrooms as well as providing some staff development or professional learning for them during their instructional focus team meetings. You've divided this up into six different sections, right? Mm -hmm. What do you think these six sections represent? When I'm in a classroom, I'm looking for a high quality instruction. I'm looking for an environment that's academically challenging for the students. I'm looking for teachers that are taking time not to simply cover curriculum, but are ready to uncover the curriculum, to open new doors for our students. This group is doing a wonderful job up here. They have gone back through, they're looking at things, and they're taking them out so that they make sure they have all of the important or imperative information. The teachers are very comfortable, and they're used to me walking into the room. So if I come in and record, it's not for a, a gotcha, but it's because I'm expecting to see such exemplary practices that I'm going to be able to share those with other teachers. What is the problem? Why do we need to solve it? And what are we going to do first? Mr. Knight's feedback on my instructional practice has actually propelled my teaching to another level. It used to be they would come in, they would give you feedback, and then you wouldn't see them for a while. 
and you'd get all of your information through staff development sessions. But now he will go into our classroom looking for evidence of rigor and then speak on it in the staff development meetings. So it's like you get all the way around feedback. And his notes are so thorough and detailed that you know for a fact that he saw everything that was going on in the room and he's figuring out how can we improve your practice and make it better for each student in the room. What is the problem that we need to address? Masada. Trying to save everybody from the chemicals. You're constantly asking questions and allowing the kids the opportunity to be able to kind of give feedback. I'm looking to see if he's aware of the strengths and the talents that he has, but I also show a cause and effect relationship of how that natural talent or strength affects the student achievement in his classroom. With his observations coming into our room so frequently, it gives you the ability to know that the man at the top of the school believes in what you're doing as a teacher, and he understands that you can take the risk, and if you succeed, we're gonna applaud you, we're gonna make sure that you spread that throughout the building, and in the event that something goes wrong, we're gonna figure out where it went wrong and challenge you to try it again and keep working at taking it to the next level for our children. Our school really becomes the hub of the community. Our parents trust us when they send their kids here every day. We are an extension of their family. <laughs> We're focused on instruction, that, that's number one. But I make sure to make time in my schedule to be out front to greet the students. We're the largest elementary school in Georgia. I can't physically go to every door every day, but when I'm on the morning announcements, I get a chance to encourage them and I get to get them excited about being here, about who they are and about learning. Good morning, boys and girls. Good to see your faces there this morning. Over the last couple of years, we've seen the achievement gap between our students close. We've seen our points raise and increase on our performance index score. All of the things that they were doing today connect to some of the things that we've been doing. The time that I spend focusing on instruction and being in the classroom, I'm seeing impact with the teachers, with the staff, with the morale, the competence level that they have in me as their instructional leader. The ultimate benefactor of that is going to be our students.